Thank you to BetterHelp and Shopify for sponsoring. More on them after the reaction. Reject Nation. We're gonna watch what I can only imagine to be the greatest movie ever made. The Beekeeper. I'm of course joined by the man I've been covering all these action movies with, Andrew Gordon. Andrew, how are you? I'm doing great, Greg. But I want to know whose impression is better. It's definitely mine. But what's but, most important? Are we watching the theatrical cut or the air cut? We're watching whatever cut. Regardless, it's going to be the greatest movie ever made. Some people say we sound Australian. <laughs> I don't hear it. I think these are the greatest impressions you're ever going to hear of Jason Statham on this <laughs> YouTube platform. <laughs> anyway, guys, did you see the beekeeper? Andrew, I've been so excited to watch this. I think we're we're jazzed. We're jacked up. All righty, Andrew, ready to do it? Let's do it. Leave a like. Also, be sure to subscribe. Click that notification bell to get notified whenever we got a reaction up on this channel. Thanks to Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Also, massive thank you to all who have joined us at our Patreon page. Coming super sexy region. You imagine if I kept this up the entire the reaction. Whole, I was gonna <laughs> say, how long can you do region. this? I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> um, at our Patreon, I'm sure we get the full length reaction watch along. We sync up with the own copy of Beekeeper. Join the night. Also cover several shows over there exclusively with highlights and watch alongs included. Let's do it. I'm the line tamer. <laughs> I hope that's his next movie. She's going to battle every every kind of animal, animal that exists. Animal. <laughs> and I would pay to see it. That should be his, his shtick. That should be his uh, typecasting. Battling a kangaroo. Oh, you see the the letters? They're like, like stingers. Oh, that's neat. There's autistic merit to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's very stylized. Thank you, David Ayer. Oh my god, there's a whole history to unpack of beekeepers. It's really neat. Oh, I didn't know Josh Hutcherson was in this. Huh? Forgot he was. Love this. This is going to be like a secret organization that has spanned centuries, it looks like. True historical protection program. Jason Statham was a producer on this. On the producer. On the producer. <laughs> Ominous. It's a good establishing shot to show it's a shadowy organization. Ooh, that's a cool mood. Kind of reminds me of the town from the first Beetlejuice. Reference number one. one. <laughs> Those things scare me to death. Well, they've been killing my honeybees. Three days unchecked. Amen. Wipe out the whole colony. What are you going to do with them? Well, that's between me and them, if you don't mind. What does that mean? He's going to torture them. They're putting up with me and all of my bees. This place is crabgrass and weeds, and you brought it back to life. No one's ever taken care of me before. Bees are an endangered species. Yeah, unfortunately. Mr. Clay... Come back at supper time. Let me feed you. Don't bring the bees with you. <laughs> He's put like trackers in the bees. Or is he just an actual beekeeper? Oh. Oh my god. Whoa. I've never seen that done before. Interesting method. Damn, that is beautiful. Did you know Jason Statham uh, studied beekeeping for six months prior to doing this? I made that shit up. I'm a method actor. <laughs> No. Who did that? Now Jason Statham is going to seek retribution. I like how uh, that's all draped in yellow, like bee color. United Data Group, good afternoon. This is Boyd. How may I help you? Oh, I hate this guy already. Uh, hello. I, I just got a message saying that there's a problem with my computer. Why are you calling the number? The message you received is from our United Data Group antivirus software. It's part of the software package that you pre-installed on your computer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not a computer person. What did you say the name of your product is again? Uh, she seems like such a sweet old lady. I know. That's who they prey upon the most is older people. 
There is actually a software package that you can download that would allow me to reinstall remotely. <sighs> oh my gosh, what a jerk. Can you, uh, can you type this? Friendlyfriend.net. Spell just how it sounds. Uh, I'm there. Oh, this seems like a realistic con artist prank. Oh, of, for sure. Yeah. I clicked the button. So you're about to see some windows open close on your desktop as I reinstall the virus shield for you. Wow. I hope you f***ing clowns are paying attention. You stick to the script. You are not Leo DiCaprio. And I choose rich every f***ing time. She has got 10K checking, life insurance annuity, Roth IRA, teacher's pension, and whole, whole. That is so messed up. F***ing shit. All right. She is a signatory. Wow. Let the script mine and begin. Ooh. Oh, my God. That is actually infuriating just because I, I, of i, I want to punch through the screen <laughs> yeah. right now Can you log into that account and verify the transfer please Ms. parker hold on yes there's oh, oh she's so innocent there's a transfer for fifty thousand dollars i made a terrible mistake i was supposed to credit you 500 but i know i got a, a stuck key here i'm gonna lose my job here no but i could wire the amount back I will need a different password, though. One second. Now, this is the master password for all her accounts. We get it. We zero out everything. Ah, oh, yuck. I think I should call the bank. <sighs> Please don't. You're probably right. But there goes my job. And there goes all your data. <sighs> oh. oh, she widow? Yeah, and I'm assuming this is she's gonna want to take her own life after this. Hello. Wow, the worst of the worst. Douche piece of crap. Uh oh. Oh. Oh God. Whoa, was not expecting to feel this much. Not going to lie. Damn, this is real. This feels so... Uh, what she's going through right now. Shit. Oh, my God. These are uncomfortable goosebumps I'm getting. That is awful. Oh, this poor, poor woman. <sighs> Honey looks delicious, though. Oh, I'm so scared she's not going to be okay. Smart, because even if this movie gets, like, cheesy action fun, starting off on a serious note is really good. Do you need that opposition? Good direction, David Ayer. Oh, man. Don't you f move. Oh. Oh, shit. Drop the knife. Is she the one from Umbrella Academy? I think she is. Why would you suspect you? someone who came in here calling her name? Verona. Ah. I'm so sorry. Well, how do you know my name? Uh. Hey, yikes. Until we can clear him, he's our best and only part. Clear him. Damn, the lens flares on the camera. <sighs> this is really starting a heavy note. Let's just completely ignore the big white dude in her house with a knife. Get up. Surprisingly effective because the, the communication he had with her was was limited, but you could feel it through the emotion and the tone. I was bringing her a jar of honey. Who the f*** are you, Winnie the Pooh? I keep bees. <laughs> How do you know my mother? I had some space in the barn from her. I have a sign lease. She didn't answer when I knocked. I knocked at her car in the driveway. I had the smoke alarm when I entered. You got a law enforcement background? I told you I'd take care of bees. It's the most badass beekeeper. I am so on board from taking out all those guys. <laughs> I know. Fraud uh, guys. I was not expected to be this personally invested. <laughs> Did you see on the phone all the fraud alerts and all that shit? There, there you go. I'm surprised it still stayed logged in that long. I usually get booted out in like five, ten minutes. It's the most unrealistic part of this movie, undoubtedly. Nothing more unrealistic is to come. His hands test a negative for gunshot residue. But the prints on the gun were your mother's. Yep. 
I wanted to thank you for taking care of my mom. Tried to stay in her life as much as I could. Obviously, I could have done a better job. Being old could be a lonely thing. In a certain age, you cease to exist. You used to be a part of life, or the family, or the hive, I guess you could say. You know, I think I know why she liked you. You just like my brother. He was in Marsak, a Marine Raider. He, he was killed a few years ago, kicking doors. His family's experienced a lot of tragedy. She got scammed. Somebody emptied out all her accounts. She was an educator, director of a charity for kids. They got two million out of that account. You know who did it. There's some c commentary here. I talked to an agent in our cyber crimes office. This crew's been operating for two years and we don't even have names. Jeez. You don't need a cybersecurity team. You need a beekeeper. Taking from an elderly person is as bad as stealing from a child. Maybe worse. Why have we been stealing from children this whole time, Andrew? The money's in the elderly. Yeah. And so help me God, I'm going to get these mother who did this. Like how it's like the yellow with the angelic light because he is the angel savior. <laughs> what are you doing? I thought you retired. I did. I need a favor. Oh, he's got a past. A name, an address. Easy. This is exciting. Not easy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Even the FBI can't find these people. Well, we're not the FBI, are we? Show me the deeds and stand by. <laughs> They're routing all over the world. But you found them. Sure. But who are these people? I'm going to find out. Is that is a good uh, ramp up to this? It's actually uh, more patient than I expected. Whoa, the hell you think you're going, pal? This United Data Group? This is private property and you're trespassing. I'm going inside. This is a... I'm going to burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going any fucking where except right the fuck back the way you came. Shut up! Do you know what they do here? Buddy, I'm count to three. Steal from the elderly. One, two, three. There. I did it for you. <laughs> oh, so badass. Scamming the weakest in our society, stealing everything they have. Do you know that's who you work for? Oh, yes. oh shit! That is what I'm talking about. But it's emotional action. Protect the old. Tell any of the companies in the building to evacuate now. There's gonna be a fire. Oh, see. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Need your attention, please. Repeat after me. I will never steal from the weak and the vulnerable again. <laughs> <laughs> He's here to bring order. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Repeat after me. I will never steal from the weak and the vulnerable again. I will never steal from the weak. <laughs> Here to teach you a lesson, kids. I hope anyone who actually does this is watching this movie and thinks twice about that. Wow. He's the psycho. They're the cold hearted sons of bitches. What the f do you think he's doing? I'm a beekeeper. To protect the hive. <laughs> This is a multi-million dollar operation, asshole. Okay, so you can't come up here white knighting shit. <laughs> Will you stomp his ass out, please? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Yes. It's like J got, Jason Bourne meets Jackie you Chan. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, damn, that was awesome. But you feel really proud of yourself. I've never seen that. He slammed right onto the keyboard. That was great. I was not expecting him to get here so quickly. I mean, there's a problem. You got to solve it, man. The next call from your little fishing scam to this call center. We'll make a spark across these wires. Anything alive in here won't be. I'm liking this more than I already knew I would like it. <laughs> yeah, from the trailers, I was not expecting to... I thought it was just going to be a so non-fasted goofy just action piece. I, I thought it was just going to be like, yeah, I just want to watch a goofy, goofy, goofy film. <laughs> yeah. it, it came back, the whole thing. Yeah, and it's, it's like, I can barely... It's all tweaked. Oh, those are nice. Mm -hmm. Josh Hutcherson is playing a so douchebag. Three amigos? Is skateboard? It's fake ass hippie bullshit. 
He must be from Southern California. This dude just scrolls in, saying we're stealing from people, and, and he burns the place to the ground. Four people didn't get out. You're telling me that this asshole burnt the entire building down and dropped four fucking bodies? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to talk to you. Oh, uh, Jeremy Irons. If I had a friend who, like, had a call center and someone burned it down, maybe killed some people, you could get him, right? Get him? Yeah, like, disappear the problem. Come on. <laughs> You literally ran the CIA and you're telling me you can't just find some guy in Massachusetts? Listen, this sounds like a job for the police. I know this guy's back right now. You're gonna log into our cloud and you're gonna look at anyone connected to the last few deals you closed. What if I find this guy? You get a wrecking crew together and you go Goodfellas on him. I mean, come on, you're a connected guy, right? You understand? I understood that reference. He doesn't like to get his hands physically dirty, though. Are you good? Yeah, I'm great. Why? I mean, you did lose your mother yesterday. Thanks for the reminder. Remember United Data Group? You sober enough to drive? Where's mine? It's an old cup for my car with instant gas station hot water. Ew. You want to No. Are they also like ex-lovers? I think uh -huh. that's the implication. That's what yeah. <laughs> Clown cars saw everything, but no one's talking. They're all frequent flyers with perjury, fraud, and cyber beeps. I want IDs on all of them. You know, this is just the tip of like 20 spears, right? Can I just have this moment? <laughs> Back to business as usual. So in this beekeeper program, you retire and remain a beekeeper? What do the bees actually do? Okay. Widow just has a daughter in Boston. I don't think this is it, but... <laughs> Matt, Pat, you are making a terrible call. That's him. Oh, he knows. He knows. Yeah, what are you guys supposed to do to him? <laughs> oh, no. To... Oh, my God. He knew they'd be coming. Yeah. I was talking about him. I guess he's a bee lover. He breaks my shit. You break his shit. That's why I said, oh no. Ugh. God. <laughs> oh my oh. goodness. What are we in for? Dark yellow lighting now. Oh, uh, you guys just strolled into the wrong place. All that honey. I feel like this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun, gory time. Let's go. Hide in this. We'll come out and face us. Bye, bitch, now. <laughs> Such a worm. It's like Batman. Beekeeper begins. Do it. Oh. I mean, that is like Batman, a silent takedown. I know, very methodical. <laughs> Not even. Oh! <laughs> oh! oh boy Where are you? Here <laughs> Is he gonna get the eyeball one now? We, we, we can talk about this. We, we can talk about this. Let's just work this out, me and you. We can fix this. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Why didn't you just listen to him? <laughs> yeah, the action here is so well done. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. It's really well done. Why are people just wiring you their entire life savings? Must be your winning personality. They got us a lawyer, so maybe you want to talk to them. You know, this is a really nice shirt, by the way. Did you steal it out of a casket, you dog -er? Are you applauding people who sleep with no, dogs? No, I'm applauding her line. Oh. I agree with her. Oh, my bad. I misunderstood. Oh, so you, you like fires? Yeah, today I do. Good, because uh, today's your lucky day. Because apparently your mother's house is on fire, too. And some other shit. Ugh. This woman's dealing with a lot of crap. What a cold-hearted way of delivering that information. United Data Group. Well, he's handsome. 
You think there's even the remotest chance that the dude who burned down United Data Group is the same guy renting the spot from your mother? The beekeeper. Said the name of the title. This movie is taking itself just serious enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To like, it's actually a really fascinating tone they're writing, and it because you you want the action to feel like cathartic when it's happening instead of just hurry up and get to it. It's, it's fun. Who the f is he? Tell me who he is right now. I I I don't know. The f beekeeper. <laughs> what, what, what's he saying about bees? I don't know. He said he was like protecting the hive or something. Oh. See in the back of the car. Oh, there he there's... is. Guys, no 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 is he gonna drag him with the car or? You're fucking crazy, man! What the fuck, bro? Oh, is he gonna drag him? Uh, I feel like he's like worse than that. Man, that's pretty bad. Dragging is still bad. Oh, I think he's gonna drive it off and he's gonna go. I don't know. Let's just find out. Yeah, because isn't the bridge open? Yeah. Oh, God! Cool. Well, technically a drag. <laughs> you have the pleasure of speaking with. Yes. You burned up my million dollar call center. Now I'm gonna burn you down. You haven't told me your name. F you, Mr. F you, and you better f you remember it. <laughs> you sound young. I bet you don't have estate planning. I'm 28 years old. Why would I need that? I'm about to show you. <laughs> <laughs> 80s action dialogue. And this is your data mining consumer service business, right? Yes, yeah, something like that. Pulling in nine million a month, one office, I've got like 20. If a beekeeper says you're gonna die, you're gonna die. There's nothing I could do or anybody else to stop it. Oh, yeah, because he's the CIA. He knows who he is. Yeah. yeah I could have done anything. Mm. But I chose this job as a favor to your mother. I keep Danforth Enterprises safe. Is he a stepfather? Well, it's just tell me what the this guy is he's probably the last pair of eyes that you're gonna sneer at <laughs> that is daunting it's like jeremy irons wants his stepson to die what'd you get on clay he's a ghost all i have is a birth certificate and a social never even had a bank account why does this guy seem so goddamn apathetic towards everything adam clay doesn't exist which is terrifying to me because he's probably in a classified program mm. If we don't get a beekeeper cinematic universe, I will riot. Wasted opportunity. I'll give you a board seat on the holding company. That's another million a year. Plus, you promised you'd take care of him. You have my word. Oh, he really loves her. My young friend seems to have caught the unwanted attentions of, of a beekeeper. A beekeeper, beekeeper? Well, that's not good. <sighs> Dark yellow. <laughs> Yellow is the theme color in this film. He's retired from the program, no longer active. Well, that changes uh, everything. I like the reversal of this framing. Now he's handheld and she's center framed in the camera still. The current active beekeeper lunatic who should have been removed months ago. Almost feels like the Continental a little. With like, uh, with tech that's hot, hot. Upgrade, but like lower grade. Here's like fax machines and old monitors and stuff. Go my job, honey. Uh oh. Get out of here! Oh Whoa. yes. Yes. You need colorful personality, bad guys. Let's go. Oh! Uh, what are you gonna do? Oh! oh! You've been a busy bee. Kill her! I'm assuming you're my replacement. Ouch. Ooh. <laughs> God, the action. It's so good. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> Jesus, he really is Batman. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> this, this turned into a whole kind of different action movie. 
Oh! Jesus. Butter up. What a burn. He still has not fired one shot in this film. Really? That is impressive. Good catch, Andrew. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, so he takes the fingers, and I have no idea why. Did you <laughs> That's like, dude, you're... Sure, you, no problem. Badass work, I'm a fan. I mean, that fire could set the whole game. Yeah, man. Did he tell that guy that civilian to leave? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> it doesn't seem like an evil human being. Uh, that's a vehicle registered to a Anisit Landret. Uh, everywhere he goes, it ends up in flames. That's a minigun. They use those on military vehicles. Do you know that puppy shoots 6,000 rounds a minute? I do think all this, like, FBI shit could use a lot more personality, though. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's the one part of the storytelling that I feel like lacks. Okay, then do you know who Anis Atlandris is? Yes, I do. I think it's more him, even so. Who doesn't exist in any commercial or government database. Someone is a ghost, like our good friend Adam Clay. Beekeeping for beekeepers. Mmm. I think she does a really good job, though. Yeah, I like her. She's really good. How are you, my friend? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, come on, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Don't play with those things. They go off. Oh, my God. Look, this is where all the diversity is. And the stuntmen, they got to play key roles for the action now, scenes. <laughs> Simon says, Beekeepers are given all resources, empowered to act on their own judgment. For decades, they have quietly worked to keep the hive safe. Damn. I am the law. Beekeepers keep working until they die. He's basically one of us. He's not like you. Got to pull the stinger out. With enough of you, then maybe you just might, in fact, be able to kill him. I like how they've constructed everything around be actual beekeeping. Oh, okay. Smart. I thought beekeepers weren't supposed to intervene. And why does that beekeeper behave so sadistically? Getting the location of every single one. He's going to take them all down. We believe that Mr. Clay is connected to a classified program named Beekeeper. Let's stick to what we know. Shit, she totally seems like she knows. <laughs> this is his next target, Nine Star United, which appears to be the entity operating the regional call centers like the one that Mr. Clay burned down. Why is Adam Clay on this rampage? Tell him. Avenging my mother. What's your ask? My ask, a SWAT team, for starters. Surveillance support, additional agents, analysts. That shouldn't be a problem. Does she want to stop him? I mean, she wants to uncover the truth, yeah. She doesn't know exactly, like, what any connections are and stuff. Phoenix, where are we at? Oh, Phoenix my God. 201K. 200K. I love you. How can you live with yourself doing this crap? Every target on there was an older person. Gather around. Awful. Oh, no. We ready? Give me an oof. 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 Power down. The private security here under orders yeah. of the governor. State Department certified. Oh, is that one of the Jeremy yeah, yeah. Irons crew? He was the main guy. Yeah. He was the main guy who spoke up. You're not welcome here. Shut the f*** up. All right, boys. Let's go. Set up the perimeter outside. It's yellow in the background. Closed and locked. Steel gate. You want a body on comms watching. Delivery dock? Same deal. Yeah, we don't see Jason Statham a lot. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> Instead of going in, I'd smoke them out. I figured I'd give the firefighters a break. I put it through enough already. What do you say your name was? Currently, I go by Adam Clay. <laughs> there was a back entrance, I would have used it. I don't want to injure anyone who's innocent or not involved. He's such a badass. Somebody detain this guy. Ah! Oh! oh! <laughs> Nobody won't kill any of them. Whoa! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh. oh. Damn, he is just, just shit. Oh my god. Why are you with my business? Because Mr. Westwild hired me to kick some beekeeper's ass. Mr. Westwild works for me, which means that you work for me. Now listen, that place is the crown jewel of my kingdom. Oof. They didn't have you, so maybe you just do your job and, and don't tell me how to do mine, please. Copy that. Set up a perimeter outside, let's go. Move. Letting his ego get the best of him, Greg. I love how he lets the build up. It's just, yeah, it's just there. <laughs> yes. Stab him with the pen. 
Oh, he just let them clear us. So funny. Not a good day to drag innocent people into this. These assholes are not innocent. For either one of us to close that distance, some of them will get hurt. Let's start with this right here. Ouch. Oh. Ouch. Wonder if they're gonna go all film without him shooting a gun. So, does Jason Statham view these guys as innocent? They seem like they're working I mean, for the wrong people. Yeah, but this would be self-defense still. But he's, he's very clear on not hurting, on not killing innocent people. Yeah, but if you work for the villains. <laughs> yep, no, they're oh. not. He doesn't view them as innocent. Okay. <laughs> Fire. Oh, good. Cool lighting. Fire. Oh, clean sweep. You know who you're working for? Business. I'm just the guy they call when there's a problem. You're creating a bigger problem, man. You are a problem. Goddamn right, I'm a problem. <laughs> I would kill a man. If not, break every bone in his face. Oh, he's going to drop the elevator? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, shit. Please, please don't kill me. I, I, I'm just the middle manager. I never had nobody. Shut up. I'd respect you more if you look people in their eyes when you're still from them. <laughs> now you're making a lot of money here. What are you about to do? I know you're the middle man. Who's above you? Don't kill me. What do you think he's going to do? I'll touch you, then kill you. Oh. <laughs> this is such a cool torture scene. <laughs> Interrogation torture. It's so simple. Like the stapler of a dab. Make it stop. You can make it stop. <laughs> Dedicated her whole life to helping people. Yesterday she shot herself. She took two million from a charity she ran. She was the only person who ever took care of me. It's like losing a mom. These people, they're untouchable. No, please, please, I'd stop. I, I will, I will. Let me show you. You better not do some stupid move. I told you they were untouchable. Nobody's untouchable. Sometimes when the hive is out of balance, you have to replace the queen. I love all these beehives. Beehive <laughs> <players. laughs> yeah. Clay! That man is directly responsible for your mother's death. I believe you, but we have laws for these things. I can't put my personal life in front of my jaws. You have laws for these things until they fail. Then you have me. Yes. The laws are protecting these things. Oh no, not Mr. Personality. Four kids. Three boys and a girl. What? Man does his research. Okay, I guess he's not bad. Yeah, he would have uncovered that. Yeah. Holy shit. What's his name? It's the son of an important politician. Oh, right, 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 right. Maybe now's the time to call your mother. He can't make his move on us if we're in her proximity, can he? I still don't see that stopping him. <laughs> You're scared, I and you want to use my mother as a human shield. Just call her, just call her, come on. I'm actually was gonna, you know, get together with some of my tech homies and stuff, if that's, uh, that's cool with you. Is she POTUS? No way, is she? Oh, she is. Oh, oh she my is Pot God. Yeah. Are you kidding? What a reveal. <laughs> I just figured she was a senator or a congresswoman. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like, because someone mentioned about meeting with POTUS or something earlier, and, and yeah, I was like, is yeah. she POTUS? Yeah. Why not let Clay do his thing? Your mom is dead because of these people. It's like oh Boondock my. Saints. I haven't seen it. Put it on the list. Okay. <laughs> We think we have a sense of Mr. Clay's true intentions. He seems to be following the money. So much slower on the camera. 
Nine Star United uses data mining software to identify these people and then target their assets. There's another company involved. Are you going to tell me the name of this company? <laughs> Danforth Enterprises, with an annual revenue of $10 billion, founded and operated by Jessica Danforth, who recently stepped down because she was sworn in as president of the United States. <laughs> who else knows this? Us three. Let's uh, keep the circle small. That's dangerous information to have <laughs> about the president of the United States. I see his kill count is steadily rising. In a beehive, I... there is something called a queen slayer. It's a bee that will rise up and kill the queen if she produces defective offspring. Oh my God. <laughs> Clay believes that Derek Danforth is the defective offspring of a queen. Thereby, Clay will strike at the heart of the problem and become a queen slayer. Adam Clay's next victim is Derek Danforth's mother. Oh my God. You have a blank check. Good luck. This is insane. I would not do that information on a Zoom call or whatever the hell they were using. I would have thousand percent done that in person. Go away. Federal Bye. Bureau of something or another, we're good. All right, you'll need to excuse my partner. He's recently concussed and hasn't slept in two days. We're on the access list. We're good, boss. Nah, that's been his personality the whole the movie. The whole movie. <laughs> Interesting choice they picked for that. It is what it is, but... The screen time they give Jason Statham just seems so reserved, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you can go, like, a, a extended periods without seeing him. Mom's detail is not going to like that. Well, if mom's detail gets in the way of what's coming for us, they're dead men. And so are we. Tell them they can stay in the kitchen. Damn, they call this estate the beach house. Wasn't your super secret CIA data mining software supposed to, I don't know, maybe filter out unstoppable killing don't machines? Don't you f with me, young man. Like, this is the f***ing keep up. Yeah, you know, I killed one once. Really? Yeah, only because I was lucky and unlucky. Gosh. My team will be our short thing. If anyone can knock this guy's in the dirt, it's them. <laughs> I thought that guy looked like Steven Tyler a little. Tell that guy to hurry up. I want every man on this street welded shut. This is David Ayer's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> President is the ultimate bad guy. <laughs> oh, I miss his, I miss the uh, hat outfit. Now he just looks like Jason Statham in every Jason Statham movie. Well, at least they had it as long as we did. <laughs> is that a three amigos skateboard? Whoa. Oh, I was late to picking up that he was wearing their outfit. Although, how much cooler would it have been if he was wearing what he's been wearing this whole time and then switching to that guy's clothes? <laughs> Why does Wallace Westwald look nervous as a burning cat? What have you done to the man? I wouldn't know, Mother. Well, he's there to protect you if you'll let him. Wanna go run the free world? Don't burn it down. Don't worry, the beekeeper's coming to do that. <laughs> I love David Ayer's like colorful choice of villainous personalities. He's like super larger than life, eccentric, <laughs> random characters that show up. No. No. Oh, okay. Just coming out in plain sight. The deputy director has flagged his. Uh concerns about some uncomfortable things happening inside the family company. Uncomfortable things about the source of my campaign funds. <sighs> Mr. Danforth, are you familiar with uh, United Data Group? Place stupid. I invested in that. How about a nine star United? Uh, that's more of like a consulting type role. There's the blockchain issues and you probably... <clears throat> Bye! Dude, this guy's gonna get killed. At least we know he's not corrupt. He just nods. He's here. What? The station's targets in the building, East Wing. Give me everything you got. He's in the house. How do you get by us? We're useless. Put your hands up. Now turn the around. Is that, is that him or no? No. How did he plan for that? 
He's outside. Target's outside. Love how he's always like 20 steps ahead of everyone. Well, bees have an ability to anticipate, man. On your knees! On your knees! Lace your fingers behind your head. Down! It's said in his hand. Oh, he's the, the, detona the detonators. Bro, those bombs he planted in the cars. Slide a hand there. Psh, shoved it behind. You aren't shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, take a step back. What are you doing? He's not even armed. As long as this. Breathing. He's armed. <laughs> You're about to see something amazing. To be or not to be? Isn't that the bloody question? Think or take? To be. To be. Yeah! Oh! oh first yes. headshot! Damn! Oh Woo! my god! You good? Go. <laughs> I really thought we were going on film without a gunshot from him. <laughs> oh shit, homie's alive! Oh, it's through his mouth! Oh, <laughs> he lives! Two weapons free! Why are you waiting? Take it easy. Take it easy. Whoa! Ouch! Mm. Ouch! Mm. Oh! Oh! Excellent. This guy's like freaking 50 something. <laughs> you broke the rules. You corrupted an imperfect but functioning system. I was just trying to get you into office, mom. This is a good conversation to have right now. Oh, blame, blame. You realize that you were behind in 15 of 20 counties you needed to win. I taught CIA software to hunt money and, and not terrorists. You didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> He has to like pick and choose who to kill and who not to, and to, to, uh. You got elected because of me, and you know that. Yeah, now I know where the money came from, and all the people you hurt. Somebody in this family has to have their fucking feet on the ground to actually get shit done, you understand that? I like the transitioning cuts back and forth between the action and- What are you gonna do to fix this? Call in the army. Tell the truth. Really? That guy who's coming to kill us, that beekeeper, I'm telling him the truth about what you did, Derek. Then I'm telling the entire nation, and if it costs me everything, well, so be it. He's gonna kill his mom. I think he's gonna kill his mom. Oh, damn. Damn, great nice shot. shot. Ooh, cool. I love that POV from below. That was amazing. Oh, great transition cut. Oh, damn. It's easy. The mercenaries are obvious mercenaries. Come on, man. Oh, oh I felt that. Might still be alive. Whoa, we haven't been doing our Jason Satham impression the entire time. Whoa. <laughs> oh. How is this guy still moving? Ooh, wow. wow. Bloody them up! In the, oh. Brutal. <laughs> Effective sound design. Ooh. Oh, God. Yeah. Ooh, I love the brutality of this. Oh. Ooh, we got one on him. Dude, this guy is tough as hell. I know, he's just a ferocious, like, force. Oh! Oh, I love how he studied that. Yes! Oh shit! Ooh. Oh! Ooh. Oh! Oh! How much oh, more can God. you take? He's hopping on one leg. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh my God! This is severed arteries. 
That was awesome. That was a great fight. Yeah. yeah. That was a great, Press, great fight. knuckle, mm -hmm. uppercut, finish. I love it. Jason said this performance there. I mean, it's just the way, like, he would, like, take notes of a thing. It's a cool story to the way the fight was going. You're going to tell this guy the truth and hope that he, he spares you and kills me instead? No, Derek. I'll tell him the truth because it's the truth. Oh. They've been having the same dialogue for the last, like, ten minutes. I'll tell the truth. You're going to tell the truth? I don't know. I'll tell the truth. Beekeepers live for the good of society. I'm retired. It's just personal. It's always been personal. Go back, live a quiet life. <laughs> I will, when this is over. That's what I wanted. The neighbor's dead. But do you live in the real world, or just protect it? What does it matter to you how presidents come to be elected? <laughs> well, what does matter to you? Right and wrong. It's not fashionable. <laughs> it's an interesting climax with them. Don't do that. So you might want to step back. No. I don't want no, to step back. I'm step sorry. back. I can't do that. <laughs> Oh my god. Told you he was gonna get killed. Play? Drop no. the weapon! Drop it! Wow. Got an interesting standoff here. You decide who you work for, for the law or for justice. Job more important than your mother? This. Bye, Mom. Oh! Full on cowboy shot. He just straight up revolver shot. Let him and, and go. The, and the bee just flew right by him, too. It was sick. Can we confirm it was a bee? It sounded like it. Your son was just about to kill you. Still, it's your son. I know. It's true. Oh, uh, yeah. Like a Western. He is amazing. Then the sequel shall be fired. You let him go. Oh, no. Uh. What? Is he going to swim back? He's going to swim back. He's the swimmer. <laughs> and there he encounters a Megalodon. Yeah, right? B. No, it's over. <laughs> it's Quick transition cut. Going, We're done. <laughs> I thought maybe she was going to announce to the world uh, how she got her fortune, what happened, but I guess we don't even need that. That was that was great. Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring, which is what we use for our merch store and is our game-changing partner in e-commerce. You don't need to be tech savvy to understand. It allows individuals and businesses to create and manage online stores, offering tools for sales, payments, marketing, and inventory management. It's worth trying out because of its user-friendly interface, extensive customization options, comprehensive suite of features that cater to businesses of all sizes. Their checkout system unmatched. It's 36% more effective at converting visitors into buyers than other platforms. And let's not forget, Shopify magic. The AI tool that elevates your business with minimal effort. But seriously, reflecting on our journey using Shopify for www.rejectnationshop.com, it's been transformative. The transition, smooth, growth, exponential. Thank you again, Reject Nation. From simplifying sales to scaling our offerings, Shopify has been a cornerstone of our success. And Shopify isn't just for us. It powers 10% of US e-commerce, backing businesses big and small in over 175 countries. Their award-winning support, always there to guide you. So ready to join the revolution? Sign up for Shopify at only a dollar a month at shopify.com slash rejects. All lowercase, shopify.com slash rejects. Start your Shopify success story now. Let's grow together with Shopify team. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I've literally just finished a therapy session and I wanted to shoot this because I'm in this state of knowing why I champion mental health support so much. In the past few weeks, work's been a little bit hectic. It's led me to miss some sessions and I really don't like doing that. And sometimes that's when the weight really starts to pile on. A lot of rest nights, a lot of fatigue, a lot of I can't sleep even though I'm so tired, and sometimes just a very deep-seated sense of gloom. And meditating and sometimes journaling are my daily go-tos, but sometimes they just don't cut it when I'm trying to pinpoint why I'm down. And really, especially after a session like today, therapy just really helps clear the fog. Discussing the feelings is a critical step for me, especially as someone who's diagnosed with ADHD, type 2 bipolar, and PTSD. It's truly a cornerstone of my well-being. And I'm not alone in this. Many of us here at Real Rejects are in therapy, facing our own challenges from depression to anxiety, or just needing a non-judgmental space to voice our thoughts. This year, I've been working on most days of the week to keep my physical health strong, and I really do champion therapy as a way to strengthen my mental resilience. And for many, BetterHelp is integral to that process. There's real value in BetterHelp's accessible and 
adaptable service. They match you with a licensed therapist and provide the option to switch if necessary, ensuring the right fit for your mental health journey. As this year winds down and we confront life's complexities, do consider BetterHelp as a resource. Really happy to be partnered with them this month, so you can go to betterhelp.com slash real rejects for 10% off your first month. Again, that's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash real rejects. So join us in moving forward stronger together. Thank you again. All righty. Well, thank you so much to the sponsor of this video. Supporting them helps support the channel. So thank you guys very much. And thank you to Angie for always wearing an RR shirt, man. Thank you to all of them buying our real real. I wasn't planning on shouting them out, but I'm, I'm, I'm always wearing them too. You're the only other one. You've earned them more than consistently more than John. We have so many shirts. And getting one is also a great way to support the channel. It really is. Creatively involved ourselves and got two more in development right now. Hopefully get to launch the first one within the next week or so. Uh, but yeah, man. For listening to us at Apple or Spotify, we just watched The Beekeeper. Andrew the Beekeeper. Nick, the Beekeeper. He's pretty quiet in this one. We've watched two movies of Jason Statham where he was pretty subdued and quiet. But again, you just always feel his presence and you and uh, like the way he's emoting his facial expressions like it, it didn't bother me that he had limited dialogue. I, I, I didn't care. I loved him so much in this movie, but I loved how personal it was like right away in the first like 10, 15 minutes. Again, I, I'd only experienced that one trailer that you showed me after we watched Wrath of Man. I was like, this is going to be a schlocky, fun little action film. I was not expecting it to be so heavy handed, yeah. at, at least in the first 15, 20 minutes. And like that is a real serious world thing where, you know, people, uh, especially older people get. I mean, obviously, everyone deals with fraud and scam, uh, you know, artists and all that. But it really affects older people. Uh, my unfortunately, my grandfather, God rest his soul, he dealt with that quite a bit. Um, and we had to try and tell him many times, like, no, like, you got to stop falling for this. And, uh, you know, that that's a big audience uh, who they go after. So uh, I like that David Ayer incorporated that into the story. And then that was obviously the personal thing. Um, also, too, I really loved all the the beekeeper stuff that they were, uh, you know, incorporating with all the uh, the lines and uh, crap that w I thought they were very interestingly uh, and well methodically used, you know, like just like mm -hmm. the the queen beehive and the offspring, all that stuff. It was just so well utilized. Um, and just like the organization and the backstory and the history, there was just so many different interesting layers. Um, but again, the, the way everything was balanced out from the action to the heavy heartedness and then a uh, little incorporation of the humor as well, uh, I thought, very well done. Um, I think like you, uh, my only weak point was some of the, the FBI stuff, uh, especially more so on that one actor. I'm sure he's a great actor. I haven't really seen him in anything. It's just I wasn't particularly fond of the way the direction of that character was used um, personally. And uh, overall, though, uh, this was such a fun time um, and such a, a heavy hearted subject again. Just with what happened with the, the the old nice lady at the beginning, you know, her offing herself um, and what happened, uh, just incorporating real life situations. And then the reveal, too, that she's the president. I was not expecting that. Uh, I just figured just a regular politician. Um, just some interesting reveals and uh, also the hand to hand combat. Oh, my freaking God. I can't even imagine the level of difficulty that all that planning took. And the way, uh, you know, that um, uh, how long it took to film all of that. Um, and Jason Statham, he is the master. That was, like, very impressive to watch. Uh, I got more to say, but what what did you think, Greg? Uh, I thought it was a really fun movie. Yeah. I thought it was really fun. And in a way that I didn't anticipate being fun. Yeah. Because the trailers pitched something that was going to, that I thought would just only lean into a schlock fest, like you said, like a cheese fest of, of an experience. And while the cheesiness is there, yeah. it, it, it's, it's surprising. Like I think in the first 15, 20 minutes, it was really smart to lean into it being serious Yeah, because you're going to go on to this mission, this vendetta, this revenge quest uh, against this clandestine organization you need to first ground it in something that's not just mission based. You need to ground it in something that is like just primal, which is revenge, but gets you connected to the characters at hand. And you need to want to. And, and the key to any revenge movie is you have to 
want to feel the character's motivation of getting that revenge. It's a real, I think revenge stories are a very cathartic uh, thing for people to experience because in real life, you know, they say don't get revenge. <laughs> okay, no, that's bad. Most people shouldn't go after getting revenge. Don't take the law yeah. into your own hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's a fantasy a lot of us wish to live out. And and so movies are supposed to give us that cathartic experience, right, uh, of those feelings that release in a way. And so I think investing you in that uh, was smart. And, and I feel like David Ayer is a uh, political commentary side of, you know, uh, politics and of course, the uh, one percenter systems in place, corruption. Well, was there? It, it was all. It was a big part of the the world building to it. And there were times throughout where I felt like maybe it was taking its. I, I like the first half. I thought was actually near perfect to me. I think the first half was near perfect mm. in, in terms of the 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 tonal balance. And then the last half, I thought, kind of got a little too, like, seriousness, where I thought there was, at times, I thought the self-awareness of what they were doing might have been not as self-aware, I will say. You know what I mean? Like, it would just get, like, super serious to the point where, because this movie has a weird weird approach where you start off with Jason Statham as his beekeeper— and while the movie revolves around him uh, in all fronts, all aspects, you'll you'll go these extended periods of time where you're cutting around to characters who are mainly just plot mechanics. Like you got Jeremy Irons and Josh, Josh Hutcherson interacting. You got uh, the, the FBI people. And it feels like they lose sight of what should feel more personal for the FBI uh, girl. Uh, I forget. I want to get her name because I, I believe she's the uh, one she's from Umbrella. Umbrella Academy. Yeah, she, she I think is. she is the one from Umbrella yeah. Academy. I want to get her name. Um, yeah, like because, and I felt like there was a lack of wraparound for her Agreed. when this started off as this should also be something pretty perp. Why does this feel more personal for Jason right. Statham and, than and it for does her. for her when yeah. it was her mom who died from this? And, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and and the only reason I'm taking that serious is because the movie started taking a more serious approach. Mm-hmm. But, now I'm very selective on using the words but and the words however. Because when they say but, that means you are negating everything that comes before it. And I'm not necessarily negating. It's a bit of a but and a however. However being in conjunction. However, and but I would say that what I showed up for was grandiose. <laughs> what I showed up for was awesome. Like the action to me in the trailers didn't even demonstrate uh, what would make the because to me, in whenever I see a Jason Statham trailer, the action looks the exact same. <laughs> like I feel like it's the same choreographer and the same fight scenes every time. And while he always does a great job, they all look like the same shit I've seen in like every Jason Statham movie. And then usually when you check into the film itself, you can see more of the uniqueness. And to me, because this is a hard R, like we saw Wrath of the Man where there's no hand-to-hand, right? It, it's it's gunplay. Gun shit. Yep. And then here, uh, it's it's mainly hand-to-hand for the guy with this like J- uh, Jason Bourne meets Jackie chan S level of violence where you use, you use brutality, but you're using props around you. And the presence of Jason Statham, of course, like he's... He, He's that guy who can play stoicism but ooze charisma simultaneously. It's a gift. It really he's got that it factor to being a star. And and I think he's excellent here. And the the violence was violent, but but creative. Yes. And packed a punch. And I and I really loved uh the and, and there was always a bit of a cathartic release. And I and I like the sequences too when he's when he's put in a position like at the uh at the estate at the very end when he has to make his way to the president, you know, he's, he's got to deal with mercenaries and SWAT team people and SWAT team. You don't kill mercenaries. You can kill. <laughs> and, and so I like how in that action scene, you're, you're like paying attention mm-hmm. to, uh, if anything, I think this movie really proved David Ayer is a hell of an action director because, yes, yes. because he has to get you like follow the action, follow, follow everything that's happening. Uh, and, and a sequence like that, where normally you just only get, you don't kill these guys. You only you can harm them, but you don't kill them. And here, I like that. That was a unique thing where 
I feel like that can be overlooked. It's a mixture where he's like, okay, you don't kill that guy, but you can kill this guy, you know? And he has to be like anticipation, uh, anticipatory. That. And the final fight too, like he saved a good brutal. I thought like the best fights might've been behind us early on, but he saved that brutal one-on-one fight for that very end guy. That which was, was cool. amazing, that fight. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I thought like this movie leaned into its, cause you know, like you got these like wacky, colorful villains mm-hmm. uh, at times, the mercenaries <laughs> or, or that other beekeeper lady at yeah. the gas station where that's where I'm like, okay, I feel like this movie being self aware there are times like the 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 energy of the movie would um lose itself lose some of the 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 I, like the the dread or drama wasn't uh, strong enough to to warn some of those scenes for me and then the fun would get a little bit lost when you would cut to like it was weird because jeremy irons the potus lady and 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 uh josh hutchinson they really gave like performances here. <laughs> they did a really good job. And then the one who plays the FBI agent, the FBI agent uh, it should be her, right? Em- yeah, Emmy. Emma, uh, Emmy Raver Lampen. Lampen. Okay, yeah. And like she did a really good job too. And and I, I feel like, Umbrella Academy. Yeah, yeah and I, I do think they uh, lo- lo- like lost sight of her. But for in terms of like an action movie where it was fun and I was engaged throughout and had a little more in its mind than I was expecting to, uh, I, I thought it was really good. It pretty much gave me everything that I wanted. I think the first half is stronger, but there's some great stuff in the in the last half. Yeah, personally. Yeah, yeah no, not <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, and I, I I hear what you're saying, and I totally agree with you. Just like on. In terms of her character, I get it. She's an FBI agent. You got to tiptoe that line on, you know, your job. And I get it. They did come around to it in the end where, you know, she did let him go, which I'm glad she did. Um, But, yeah, it it did feel like it was more personal to Jason Statham's character, uh, which, again, you know, we we found out like that uh, the uh, there was that line of dialogue that how she was the only one who was ever like you know, that motherly figure that was kind to him and understandable, but I I really would have, uh, you know, just if when they were leaning more on that serious stuff, just would have liked that they were showing like that she was extremely conflicted with like trying to, you know, do her job or take this more in a more personal sense. Cause I really feel like that would have been a little more grounded Mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, all this, but you know, it is what it is. Um, But also too, in, in regards to Jason Statham's character on top of the badass that he was, I just loved how, you know, to your point as well, in terms of like how he was able to sneak into, you know, the the estate and all that, he was just so resourceful. And, you know, that came into wh- whether he was sneaking into places, whether he had the tactical gear ready to go um, with the, the suit or to go onto the beach. Also, too, when he uh, met the uh, charismatic and uh, best character, the uh, partner FBI agent, uh, he's like, I have kids. And he's like, yeah, three boys and a girl. And like he just, he did his research. He was extremely... Uh, you know, uh, just intelligent. He just knew things. And I just, I love intelligent, smart, badass characters like that. And uh, I just I was so appreciative of that. Yeah, I think I think this was overall like a really, this is a solid action movie. Okay. To me, it's a solid action movie where um, at times I could, like in the last half particular, there were certain scenes where I was like, is this, when it was cheesy, I felt like intentionally self-aware. Yes. And other times I'm like, are we not self-aware anymore? And is this supposed to be like really serious? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. at times it's supposed to be serious. So, you know, and that's what I mean. It's They're, fine. I, you got to just find a balance, though. And I that's think sometimes that thing. balance comes a little bit off. Yeah. And, and, and uh, so, But whenever Jason Statham is there... The movie's incredibly engaging. And yeah, yeah. for sure. And yeah. I, I really thought it, it's fine that they didn't, but I truly thought they were going to go through the entire film without, without him a using a gun. But the, in the time that they did go, that was incredible. I, I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw an action hero in, a, in this yeah. type of film go that long into a film like with that many action sequences, just do hand to hand, no guns. I was impressive. Yeah, but I think again, that's a testament to David Ayer yes. as a director. Yes, uh, is because the build up to that, you know, like you were really noticing it too, and I was noticing it. So they reserve when he uses guns for a moment. Yeah, like they make it a moment when he first uses that gun, and you, even the introduction, like my favorite colorful villain, probably the last guy I had the the uh, the hallway fight with, uh, because even the introduction of that guy, like he's so much larger than life, he's so eccentric and crazy. But they set him up with the with the um, prosthetic leg. prosthetic leg, and that tells you right away, like, 
you know, this guy could take a hit. <laughs> so could take a lot of hits. He could take a lot of hits. Maybe put a bullet in his face. And leg. He's just going to keep coming. Didn't care. So there, there is this uh, force of nature that just keeps coming. I mean, coming yeah, yeah, that guy had me saying, this dude is a badass, too. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if the there are any fun uh, facts here. This is Jason Statham's fifth film in the last year. Wow. That's it? Adam Clay's birthday. Oh, this is a fun fact from the FBI file. It's July 26, 67, which is Jason Statham's actual birthday. You didn't know that was his birthday? Did oh, I didn't know. I didn't either. Okay. Um, this sounds like... When Adam Clay excuses himself from the conversation with Agent Parker, says, I have to take care of the hive... This sounds like he is taking care of his bees, but instead the first reference to his former world to protect society. Mm. That's so funny. Most of this was shot in England, really. A uh, lot of this. Oh, fa- fascinating. I would have thought maybe they really did shoot in Massachusetts. No explanation of the old tech, especially the CRT computer monitor scene in the film, is ever offered. That is because the story was originally supposed to be set in 2003. Remember I was saying the computer, I was like, this is weird. The computers seem like they're older tech. Yeah. Uh, before the idea was abandoned. However, as the art department had already started sourcing uh, some of the hardware for budgetary reasons, it was decided just to keep in what they had already purchased. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I don't know. It kind of like worked for me. Yeah. Kind of like added to the flavor of like, they are so underground, <laughs> you know? Uh that was that was that was really interesting, but no, this was a fun fun movie, man. Uh, I I really liked it. Give me what I wanted. Keep scrolling down. There's I think there might be some more. Really? Yeah. Keep going. Anything else? Oh no. Oh, I thought that was okay. I thought there was. You normally you get more facts when a yeah, movie's been the, out a while yeah, yeah. longer. I forgot to uh. first day, but yeah, no. Overall, good stuff. Um, I hope this movie is a lesson for the pieces of shits out there that do these kinds of things and scam people that. If you ever do something like this, an actual beekeeper will come after you. Um, so don't even try it. Um, I want to go to an actual beekeeper and see what's up. I'm right. be like, I know who you really are, beekeeper. <laughs> like, um, do you want some honey, Craig? Okay. I don't know what you're trying to say here, man. I hope there are beekeepers out there who have, who have a serious passion for their job who did not see the trailer for this and saw oh beekeeper oh, finally a yes. movie that does about a story about bee- beekeepers yeah, i can't wait and then see they watch it's like this is it out of all my life <laughs> like which organization do i need to join this is a false representation of me <laughs> as a, in my profession uh <laughs> now people who get scammed are gonna call me like, this is not what i do i've been meaning asked to do a lot of things that are not part of my what my job entails me to do now yeah. all righty guys well good uh, job david air awesome and jason statham what did you think of the beekeeper leave your thoughts down below i think they can uh, do a sequel that goes even well i would love a sequel i really would yeah. i really love a sequel. It's like i mean a, it's even, like an eight out of ten for me yeah i yeah. would say that too uh, even too if they a uh, sequel i'd be down for even if they showed us a prequel just what led him to getting to yeah. where we started the film i'd, I'd be down for either or yeah um, i'm just so down for this universe the uh, beekeeper universe yeah i'm like 7.5 to 8 out of 10 somewhere there where are you I'd probably go 7.8 out of 10. Okay, yeah, I'm like 7. Point. If, I, I'm gonna look, if I'm looking for that solid, so yeah, 7.797. 7. Damn it. Oh, beat me again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what would you guys think? Leave your thoughts down below. I had a really fun time, and I would absolutely love a sequel. Yes. We'll talk with you guys soon. Mm-hmm.